Hello and welcome back to the GamesIndustry.biz Investment Summit Online, sponsored by Exola, Renaissance PR and Sony PlayStation. Next up, we have a presentation, Sega Searchlight and Two Point Studios. Uh, if you have any questions, this is live, so please pop them into the chat area of YouTube during the talk and we'll try to answer them afterwards. Uh, but before then, I'm very pleased to introduce from Sega Europe, Alex Peters. So hello, Alex. Hi everyone. Um, I hope everyone is doing really well here. Um, obviously, it's really unique times. Um, it's still really weird to be doing this online. So I thought we got used to it by now. But so I'm just going to switch over to the presentation. Yeah. Here we go. Right. So I'm going to take you through very briefly, to be fair, the um, journey that Two Point have gone through the Searchlight team. Um, first off, I I think it's important I introduce myself um, and I kind of I, I want to tell you how I got here because I think it really frames what we're trying to do with creating Searchlight. So I've been in the industry for 25 years now. I started as a programmer at Bullfrog Productions. I first things I ever did was convert some of their games at Syndicate Wars to Windows 95 from MS-DOS, which was entertaining, but that wasn't really what I wanted to do. I really wanted to work on games. That's why I joined Bullfrog. So first game I ever worked on was Dungeon Keeper. And I did everything, all the game, a lot of the gameplay programming for that. And obviously over the years, Bullfrog got bought by EA. It turned into EA UK, did a conversion of Quake. It did a lot of Harry Potter games. But there's only so many Harry Potter games you can do. So um, I had the opportunity to go over to Sweden um, and go and work at DICE and help them finish Battlefield 2. So only supposed to be there for 10 weeks, turned into three months, eight months, two years, four years. Did a number of roles there from obviously helping them finish the title of Battlefield 2, Battlefield 2 but then also helping them change from being a, like a niche PC developer to being multi-platform and the powerhouse that they became. Uh, I've done a lot of roles over my years, but after the four years in Sweden, I moved to Canada initially for um, to work at Disney Studio as EP, but I ultimately ended up at Relic Entertainment, where one of the games we launched was Company of Heroes 2. I uh, was running the studio at that point. I had the unfortunate situation of THQ going bankrupt and having to announce that to the studio. But with that came opportunity, um, and after four, year, four years again, in Canada, I had I moved to LA to Santa Monica to work for Activision, where I oversaw a whole of the Skylanders um, production. So that's not just the games; and it was a, it's obviously was huge. I learned all about toys, I figured out how to make toys, um, how to sell them at retail. So I've had a, quite the journey, but the majority um, of my career has been on the development side. I I bring all this up because I think moving around the world has given me insight into Development is development, right? Everyone kind of does it the same way, but everyone's culture is different. And you get to see how different publishers, different developers, and different people think and how how the countries run. And it just gives me, I think, a much more broader view of the world and how, how some things work, some things don't work. Some things work for some countries, some things work, don't work for others. But I'm now back in the UK, have been for just over three years. I joined Sega over two years ago and um, I joined specifically to basically take over effectively transform what was an internal um, initiative if, if that because it was it wasn't an official thing called Sega Searchlight basically transform it into an external initiative where it was going to be responsible for uh, a lot of future growth for Sega Europe so let's actually talk about Sega Searchlight so what is it um, Initially, as I say, it was an internal thing. It, its primary function was to take Japanese IP and bring it to PC. Um, as you know, Sega's really great on PC, a great relationship with Steam, really puts effort into ensuring the products released on PC are fit for purpose, right? There's no um, cheap, fast ports. It's all about making sure all the right options are there and all the right quality of life stuff. So, but they'd start to sign a couple of projects with. Uh, a company called Play Store and Time Two Point Studios, and so the they wanted to they were seeing success and they wanted to make it bigger. They wanted to focus on growth. So what it is is Sega Searchlight is 
Sega's incubation program, right? We support, nurture, and help studios to bring their game visions to market. And our mission is to create real long-term partnerships with quality studios who have great ideas and want to make great games. Um, all sounds great, but from my point of view, we want to do things differently. Right? I've been on the developer side, a bit on the publishing side. There's a lot of friction um, between those two camps, and I don't see, I don't see why there should be. I, um, I think there's a better way to do it. You hear all these stories, you see a lot of acquisitions, they fall apart, you see and read about a lot of really odd and strange, and you can't imagine how um, partnerships can continue when, some, uh, when certain things happen. So we really, we want to come at it with a real developer focus, right? We are a small team, we will never do many, and I'll explain that why um, later. We want to make sure that we adapt to the process of the developer, right? Each studio is different. Each studio has its own culture and its own way of making games. Each studio is a different size and at a different stage, and each game is different. So as a team, we look to adapt what we're doing to complement and add value to what the de developer needs. Um, we really are in it for the long haul, and I'll start to explain that our goal um, to say the corporate isn't to make money, isn't to make re uh, revenue and profit. We're there to find long-term value. And what that translates to is we want to work with great teams where we can um, start to partner and we can ultimately acquire. And this is our end game and we're really upfront about it. Uh, it's not always going to happen. Not all games get to market. Not every game that gets to market will we acquire the studio. Um, and it's because we're trying, we kind of, we use a couple of analogies, try before you buy it. And it's on both sides. Um, but our process, the other analogy we use is, is kind of, we, we want to date. We want to get engaged and then potentially get married. And it all depends on how things are going. And so our process is really, there's six stages to it. There's the first two are the dating phase, really, which is find and secure. I imagine we're looking for these great teams, great ideas. For us, talent always comes first. That is so important. Then, hopefully, we secure it. We sign a contract. At that point, we start the whole engagement phase where we start to develop together. Um, we start to grow together. And hopefully, the, the sum of the two parts is greater and we deliver great value for everybody. And then, if things are good and both sides are really happy and it's the right time, the right deal, then we look to get married. Right? We look to acquire. Um, but this last stage is integration. And I think it's worth really calling this out because a lot of acquisitions, pop the champagne, it's done, and then it all falls apart. And that just seems ridiculous, really. Um, what we do is we are there from starting when we find something right through to integration. And so integration for me is the most important thing we can do is to ensure that nothing really changes post-acquisition. Searchlight's still there, we'll still work with the studio, we'll still slowly introduce them into the say corporate areas and the things that they have to do. We um, we eventually, as the studio will grow, we will eventually fade away. That's our goal. And then the studio, as you'll see, can then run itself. Because often, to be a part of a bigger publisher, you do need certain other functions that you wouldn't have as a smaller developer. So again, I can say all this, but it has to match how, say, Europe is structured. And the best way to think about Sega Europe is it's an investor. It owns a number of studios through Creative Assembly, Amplitude, Relic, Sports Interactive, and Hardlight. And they are all independent businesses in their own right. They have their own vision, their own culture, right? And Sega doesn't try to change any of that. Um, the studios themselves are responsible for what products they do, for their roadmap, the long-term roadmaps, their P&Ls, right? We, what we do is we try and say it is provide added value, right? The support services where the studios are, so, are small, right? Creative Assembly, 700 people now, has a lot of functions from marketing to, to HR and everything, but the smaller studios don't necessarily have that. So Sega Europe can provide that support. But what we also are trying to create is, and I said this, we will never do too many of these searchlight incubation projects because we want to give them the right attention. It's not we're going to do 10, 20 of them and have three people oversee them all and then never have time to do anything. We really want to add value, which means allocating people to each of these projects. 
And key to us is we treat them like an internal studio from the outset. So once a contract is signed, um, we let them talk to all the studios, they have access to all the tools, um, they allow, we allow them to um, join our dev days, which is an internal Sega thing, all the studios get together and share. There's a lot of knowledge, right? So we're trying to create this environment for success where everyone can shine and grow within. Um, we don't hold anything back. We can provide the funding and support, obviously, for research so you can understand how consumers are reacting to your games because those things often don't come cheap. But the key thing is we want the studios to be responsible for their businesses because that's where that responsibility and accountability should lie. And so at the moment, Two Point is still part of Searchlight, but in the near future, we'll find out when they're ready, they can they will fully stand on their own two feet and they'll say Searchlight will, will fade away. And one of, as an example of that, one of the first things we did once they joined was, uh, I believe it's the anniversary, we did a free weekend um, for two point studios. And so what we did was we used all the studios and went to them and said, well, could we not integrate your IP into two point for some limited time? And we did that. And likewise, being Sega, we have good relationships with everyone, Valve being one of them. And so we we're also able to introduce other IP. So we were able to add Val's um, head crab from Half-Life into it as well, which was great. And it's, it's the sort of things we can do to promote and to cross-sell and effectively expand the business. But let's talk about Two Point Journey. The most important thing is Gary and Mark, so Gary, Carl, Mark Webley, just pitched an idea. That was it. That was what it was at the time. It's an idea on paper, which is very obviously hard to read, but this is where the leadership part comes into, right? So we obviously they had huge success. We knew they were experts in this genre. Um, but it's not just about having a great idea and great leadership. Those two things go a long way, but we also have to start digging into like, well, how are you going to build a team? What is the audience you're aiming at? What are the risks? But then likewise, as you start to go from a small number of people, then how, how are you going to manage that, right? Because you have to start thinking about the business. You have to start thinking about who's going to start paying the electricity bills. And so we look at all that, but everything looked really good. We felt really good about each other. And so at that point, Ben Hyman's joined the team and the team started to grow and they started to build a game. Um, they, the thing I think that's really important to call out here is as the team grows, um, it's either two, three, eventually got up to 17 when we bought them. The, the thing that you have to be careful with is culture, right? You, you've got to make sure your culture and dynamic, dynamics of the team are right. When you're small, obviously you're relying on everyone. And so if there are any problems that you have to you have to deal with it early. That's the one learning and advice we give. Um, it's hard, right? Small teams make the hard decisions harder. But great news. Obviously, they delivered the game. And from Sega's point of view, they delivered it on budget. They delivered to the expectations. The quality was great. Um, it's a little bit late, but nothing really that was meaningful. Um, so they, they did their part of the bargain. And then I think Sega was able to amplify and help provide the publishing might that if they had done it as a as an indie self-published route, they wouldn't have got to. And then because of all this, together, we created the Steam number one global top seller. And it outperformed our initial expectations. Um, and we've continued, as we'll talk about in a moment, to support it. Um, but obviously, with success comes attention, and there was a lot of people talking to them, as you can imagine. Uh, we were one of them, and but in the end, uh, they agreed to become part of Sega, and I do believe a big part of that is we knew what we were getting into. We believed in them, um, they believed in us, and we knew each other. We knew how we worked, we knew our pros, we knew our cons, we knew what worked, what didn't, um, but that relationship is really, really important. The one thing, I think is important to talk about if we're looking at acquisition is it's it's not good enough to just think about the, the current game right you've got to have a plan you've got to have a where are you going to take what you're doing and where are you going to take the studio or the franchise and so in thinking about what three years five years ten years whatever your long-term view is having a kind of franchise plan or a studio vision is vital to to talk acquisition. Um, we obviously are only interested in, in acquiring studios where the studios can stay together and the, the team wants to continue to grow and make great games. 
And you see that with our, all our studios in the majority of cases, even though some have been a part of Sega for over 10 years, most of the founding members are still there, which is quite incredible when you think of it from an acquisition point of view. But together, we started to support Two Point, and we delivered a lot of DLC, we did a lot of expand, little expansion, and even released the soundtrack. We just continued to offer additional content. And this was just to keep the product live, to keep it going. Um, but we also listened to the community, fixing bugs. A lot of a lot of these DLCs, a lot of these things were, were delayed because we just focused on what the community wanted. A lot of quality of life features. And this is so important to keep your game live, relevant, and continuing to sell. Um, many games now can have a really long tail. And if you keep supporting, you keep them relevant, they're fresh, and people will keep coming in. And you've just got more value. So that was the that was supporting the PC, but obviously we wanted to grow the audience. And um, with the help of Red Kite in the UK, we developed the console games on Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch. Um, these were definitely late. There was a bigger undertaking than we thought. And although we, we were doing well, everything is about building the two-point brand. And so we did not want to at any point miss steps. So we invested more money, took up an extra six months and eventually released it. And we're really proud of them. The, the reviews, the feedback, community feedback, everything has gone really well. And I think we couldn't have done a better job. Um, and then things like partnering with Xbox Game Pass brought up and grew our audience. So a lot more people are now playing uh, the title. And uh, yesterday, you'll, you'll see we are, we also are now on EA Origin, and you'll see a lot more of this this stuff happen again. So you can help do a lot of this stuff because it can let it can leverage its size and actually deliver a lot of great deals. But everything we do obviously is about building for the future. So a lot of the stuff we're doing now, obviously looking towards what's coming next, which I will not be talking about. But what did we learn? in this time so going back to those sort of six steps find and secure talent is our priority right great people make great games it's as simple as that um but likewise you've got to have a plan it's important and deals take time this frustrates me but they do right lawyers are involved things need to be negotiated just things take a long time so whatever you think it's going to take whether it's signing a publishing contract, gaining equity investment, it just takes time. We're doing a lot of work ourselves to just track how long things take for us and where we can minimize the time because it still feels one of those things that it's a bit unfair and we do want to square things up and make things happen quickly where we can. But we are part of a bigger organization, so we do have a process that we have to go through. Um, the next two phases, develop and grow. Responsibilities are key. You need to know who's doing what, who's responsible for what. One of the things Searchlight does is it's you don't have to use any of the Sega Europe services, whether it's QA, localization, we, we will adapt. Um, but make sure that's laid out at the front, right? Make sure you know who's responsible for you because you don't want to end up in that situation where both sides think someone else is responsible for it. And think about how you want that relationship to work, how the milestones are going to come in and how you're going to talk about them and feedback and everything. Um, and from our point of view, treating them as an internal studio just allows us to open up more doors because um, we can do deals with whether it's distributors, first parties, where we can include some of the other titles and stuff that we're doing. And then lastly, acquire and integrate. So. I guess this is this is really interesting because at some point evaluation comes out. Um, we'll do our valuation, others will do their valuations. Um, how the deal is structured is really important. So it's really important to understand all those things. But the way we approach it is we just we talk when we talked about long term, we talk about what that roadmap is. We talk about what we believe is achievable and what it's gonna take to make that. And from that, we basically build a studio long-term P&L, and that's what generates the valuation. And then we then we work off that, and that aligns us. So that means our get our goals are shared, right? So we're both working towards the same thing. So post acquisition uh, is just the beginning, but we now need to deliver on that roadmap. If you if you want a really high evaluation, and you say you're going to do a whole load of stuff, if you can't achieve it, a lot of a lot of deals nowadays are done with earnouts and future uh, based on future profit that 
you're just gonna fall short, right? So it's key for us to make sure we can we can commit and deliver. If anything, we want to overachieve. That's one of the things we set out with Two Point. Um, but having that shared map, roadmap and then having Searchlight still there, Gary Carr said it right. Searchlight has skin in the game. Our goal is to bring new studios into Sega. We need the acquisition and the integration to go really well. We need Two Point to be successful as much as Two Point needs to be successful. So we're, we're singing off the same theme sheet. It's really, really important. The, um, if I was going to conclude with one thing, it's all about partnerships, right? That's everything. It's all about how you're, you build relationships, how you treat each other, and actually working together to create something great. So currently Two Point Studios is still actually part of Searchlight and has been for the last, since acquisition, which I guess is nearly a year and a half. Um, we're still there, we're still helping guide them, but they're taking on more and more responsibility themselves as they build out the team. Um, really, when they feel ready, then we will, we say Searchlight will fade away and they'll become independent within Sega again. So, and that's the journey that, that we, we've gone through with Two Point and we're looking to go through with some, started with some other partners and we're always on the lookout for, for more. So I thought I should do the, the quick pitch really. Um, so why should we sign, why should you sign with Sega Searchlight? Really it's bespoke, right? We will match and scale to your needs. We will focus on things where we can add value. We at the moment can't add a lot of value on free to play, mobile, just, it wouldn't be fair to do those kind of deals. It's how we think about things. Obviously, Sega is is massive. It's a huge heritage and brand re recognition. Um, we operate globally. Um, we don't take control of your vision. We don't tell you what to do. It's one of the lines we won't cross. We don't take the IP for that same reason. It's if we own the IP, we can say what to do, right? So you guys. We keep the IP. We, you make the decisions. We'll give you. We'll give input, and we'll listen, and we'll do research, and we'll go present it. But it's up to our studios to decide what to do. Because again, in the future world where these studios are part of Sega, they need to stand on their own two feet and control all that and be responsible for it. And we're really, really about partnerships. Now, just in case you do want to get in contact. Best person is Bobby. He's I'm sure loads of people know Bobby. He's absolutely awesome. And there's a, the best way to get there is searchlight at sega.co.uk. We do a lot to make sure we are responsive, meet our deadlines, and talk to everyone and get feedback. Even if we don't like your idea and it's or it's not right for us, we'll tell you why. Um, just to try and help make things better for everyone. So with that, I'm going to switch back so you can all see me. And I believe. We're going to go to some Q&A. Fantastic. Thank you, Alex. That was great. Um, yes, we've got a few minutes for questions. So if you've got anything you want to ask, just pop them into the YouTube chat. Um, first thing, uh, we had a question. What sort of games are you looking for um, in this kind of scale genre, that sort of thing? Yeah, we're, it's a great question. Um, we'll talk about it a lot. There's a, we have a lot of ambition, but I just mentioned we, we're going to limit what we can do and we're going to we focus on we focus on talent first, um, then the product, and then obviously is a potential for acquisition. But what I've talked about is adding value, right? Is this a project where we can really add value, where we can add to the development, you know, fill the gaps, make them stronger, and make something bigger together? So our, our budget rate, like I think our sweet spot is somewhere between, I guess, up to about 10 million at the moment. Um, some of that is we we're still learning and we're going through the process with numerous developers and uh, that is key. Obviously, Sega's renowned for PC; it's renowned for strategy, so that those kind of games really fit. But there's there's definitely um, a lot of the publishing expertise we bring we can apply to other genres, and, and we will be doing and sharing in the future other genres we're working in. Good stuff. Um... I was going to ask as well about um, the acquisition part of this. If you see a game that's fantastic and you see a studio that's awesome as well, do you just say, you know, if they don't want to be acquired at that stage, are, are they out of the picture? The, the short answer is yes. Um, things can change, but the short answer is 
our goal is to increase the number of studios within Sega in, in the future. And so if acquisition isn't an option, then we will likely, very likely pass up on the deal. Right. That's cool. Okay. Um, I had another question. How much control do developers have over which platforms and storefronts they appear on? The way it's best, I always frame everything in how do our internal studios work. They make the decisions. They are fully responsible. Right? And so we are not changing that. So we've had discussions with, with our partners through Searchlight of whether they want to use copy protection or not. We always end up referring back to the studio. And it's their IP, it's their product, it's a, it's a partnership, it's they take control of it. And so what they pitch um, and what they want to do, then that's where we start. Now, obviously, if we see great opportunities, we are going to present them and talk through that. And, um, but that sometimes that doesn't make sense. Right? It's stretching teams too far. Um, but then likewise, with Two Point, really wanted to get to console, didn't have a great deal of console experience didn't have the bandwidth to keep working on what they wanted to support us for, we, we can actually help manage external partners to deliver some of that stuff. Um, and that therefore allows the team to focus on the core IP. Great. Yeah. Uh, we had a question about um, pitching, actually, because there'll be a few people that will be a um, few companies that will be pitching over the next two days. Uh, what, what are you particularly looking for in a pitch? very easy to understand concept right people can can go into huge amounts of detail which we don't get me wrong we love because we love talking about games uh but a, a clear picture of knowing what you're trying to make knowing who you're going after and knowing how and it's important knowing how you're going to make it as well everyone is different and I don't think there's a standard way of doing it, but you really have to think through, right? I've got to sell this. I've got to get people hooked. I've got to get them interested. So they want to learn a little, go a bit deeper. So really think about what those first few slides are. Make sure you know who your audience is, because um, that's important. Like to so say you're going to make a game for everybody, it's going to be really hard to market because who do you target, right? You can't, you can't suddenly do Facebook ads for everyone on Facebook because mm. it's, it's just not effective. So you've got to know what you're going after. And that also allows us to then focus in on how we can do concept testing and research to help support how is your game resonating with that audience or should we tweak the audience or should we tweak the game? Um, but just know the game you're making, be able to pitch it really quickly and to get people hooked and then just talk about why why it's innovative, why it's new, why it's exciting, why it's innovative, what your special source is, where your experience is. But, do obviously cover what you're looking for. And it's a, a thought out plan of how you're going to build it goes a long way. <laughs> um, slightly related to that, actually, we've had um, someone ask about, um, do you expect a, a concept or do you want to see kind of a finished game or a vertical slice? What do you expect to see on the game? We have seen everything from, almost, from a two page concept right up to an almost finished product. Um, and I think it just depends on what, where the team's coming from. We will look at everything. Our, our job, our, the goal we gave Bobby was try and find and build relationships with everyone, right? which is an impossible <laughs> task. But like, let's look at everything and let's, because it helps us understand what we're looking for and uh, helps us give better feedback and helps us pick the, the right things that where we could say we can add the most value. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, I'm afraid we've run out of time there, Alex. So um, thanks ever so much Ready for here, taking man. part today. That was great. Great. Thank you. And thanks to everyone else. And enjoy the rest of the talks throughout the next couple of days. Thank you. That's brilliant. Um, OK, our next session uh, is at 12 midday UK time. and is a talk, uh, Failing with Style, featuring former PlayStation exec Shahid Ahmad. Uh, you can get the YouTube link for that on meet to match or watch live at live.gamesindustry.biz. Um, that's it for now. See you soon.